So looking at the information in the question, we go to part two first. It says that raw materials of 11,000 was purchased. So this is the first entry that we're going to do. So we're going to debit raw materials, increase that inventory account, and they're on credit, so we're going to credit accounts payable. We are then going to issue some of that raw materials into production, and we're told in part four that we required raw materials for job number one and job number two. So this is going to be our second journal entry. So we're going to debit works in process as this raw materials is starting to get incorporated into the product and we're going to credit the raw materials account. So transferring it from that storeroom now into production, get it becoming part of the inventory that we're creating. So part three, we had some direct labor so we had for job number one, 14 hours at $45. Job number two, nine hours at $45. So to record this, we're having those employees clock on, perform their work. So we're going to introduce this into the product and so debit working process and credit wages payable. Part four. We're now um, estimating our overhead for the period where overheads are those indirect costs and in order to estimate as early as possible in the period we use an applied rate. We're using it on the basis of machine hours so we look to job number one use 20 machine hours, job number two use 15 machine hours and we multiply that by our overhead rate. So we're going to calculate that in terms of part three of the information told us we had expected or budgeted overhead costs of 45,500 and they base that off 50 machine hours. So we, we, divide, we divide through 45,500 by 50 hours and then multiply that overhead cost per unit by the total machine hours used for job one and job two. So we debit work in process for this 31,800 and credit overhead control to apply the overhead to the job. So we, we're introducing that overhead budgeted costs into the inventory that we're creating and we can see that also in the overhead T account that we put in the apply on the credit side and we can do this as early in production as we have the budgeted figures and we have the machine hours used. And then later on we can have the actual overheads. So part five is asking for looking at the actual overhead. So later on when we get the electricity bill, the rent bill, etc., we can record this journal entry. So the question tells us there there is um, electricity payable, there's some depreciation expense on the factory equipment, there's some wages payable that could be supervisor's salary, and some rent payable. So we put all of these costs in and debit the overhead control account. And we can see this in the T account. And we can now think about whether we're accurate, because when we use estimates, we can have a variance, because we didn't we didn't estimate perfectly. We can now in part B estimate what is that? Is it an over applied or under applied? So we can play the applied overhead with the actual overhead. We found we applied too much, so it's over applied. You can see that in the T account as well, that the applied is too big. We need to top up with 905 to, if we want to close the overhead control account. Then the question is asking us to dispose of the variance and it says that it's immaterial. So this means just a write-off to cost of goods sold and to close the account we need to debit overhead control as it was over applied. 
we credit cost of goods sold because it's got too much expense in it. The alternative is if it was a material variance and you're always told in these questions if it's material or immaterial then if it's material it's going to affect three accounts. We, we recognize that the overhead estimated applied overhead is in the work in process, finished goods and cost of goods sold accounts. So we would do a calculation to spread the overhead of, that was over applied to the three accounts in the proportion of their balances. So now we're going to do the uh, schedule of cost of goods manufactured. So we're collating together the information we had in those journal entries and we're starting off with the raw materials section. So at the beginning we had nothing on hand, it was zero because we've just started producing this product. We add in what we purchased, so from that first journal entry we purchased 11,000 of raw materials. So what was available for the period? 11,000. We are told in the question that $900 was left behind of raw materials. So minus our closing gives us direct materials used for the period of 10,100. Direct labour from our journal entries, we've calculated that as 1,035. We now have the overhead section and we can put in our actual overheads, rent, electricity, depreciation, indirect labour, but then we're doing a reconciliation with our estimated, our applied overhead. So we're going to add back in the over applied overhead. If it was under applied, we would minus it. So we're reconciling actual to applied. So we put in that over applied 905 to give us our applied overhead. Then we're going to add up direct materials, direct labour and overhead applied gives us our total manufacturing costs. The next step, we're going to estimate what's finished during the period. So we add the opening working process, it was zero, because we just started production of this particular item. Then we carry down, so the total costs of all working process, so that's job one and job two, for the period 42,985 minus the closing, so we're told in the question job number two is not finished, it's left behind. So we put less closing working process, 14,405. This gives us cost of goods manufactured. So this is the transfer between working process and finished goods for the period. Job number one will continue on to finished goods, 25,580. We can now have a look at the cost of goods sold statement. So it starts with zero beginning finished finish goods. We're going to add this cost of goods manufactured from the previous statement. Then this gives us goods available for sale. Less finished goods inventory because job number one is sold during the period, it doesn't remain behind in the finished goods account. So cost of goods sold unadjusted, so prior to adjustment of under or over applied will be 25,500. So why do we need that number? We're going, that was the number we used to estimate for the uh, sales revenue when we get to the income statement. Now we less the over applied overhead of 905 and we have adjusted cost of goods sold. We use that adjusted cost of goods sold in the income statement. The next step is to look at part D, period costs. So these are the costs that are happening outside of the factory and we're given these in a table and we can summarise these into selling and admin expenses. So we're going to debit selling expenses which includes advertising and sales commission, debit admin expenses and then we credit those payables of those accounts. So credit accounts payable, credit wages payable, and credit accumulated appreciation of office equipment. 
So the final part is to look at the income statement. So the income statement, we have the first line of sales revenue, which is based on those cost of goods sold unadjusted. We had access to that figure early in the period, so we use it to determine the selling price. And we're told in the question it's a cost plus markup of 60%. So the unadjusted cost of goods sold multiplied by 1.6. That gives us sales revenue, 40928 Less the adjusted cost of goods sold. So we did that uh, immaterial adjustment and we took away the over-applied overhead. So 24675 So sales less cost of goods sold gives us our gross profit. Now less our operating expenses. So these are our non-factory expenses. So selling expenses, 685 and admin expenses 835. So now we have gross profit less the operating expenses gives us net profit of 14,733.